All right, so we're checking out another all-in-one flight controller board here from Darwin FPV. So this is a whoop style or toothpick style 25 and a half millimeter mounting um, pattern all-in-one flight controller board. And they have made a board like this previously. Uh, it's very similar, but this one comes with a built-in Express LRS SPI receiver. So some of you are gonna like that, some of you are probably not gonna like that. Obviously, if you want to save a little bit of weight, uh, putting a, an Express LRS receiver on here is a good way to go if you don't mind the sort of the downsides of it being a SPI receiver. In terms of the form factor, it, it looks very similar in terms of um, the size and everything uh, compared to the previous one. It's at F411 as well. It's 15 amps bursting to 17 amps for the ESDs, also 1 to 3S. And this is one of the very rare um, I guess whoop style flight controller boards uh, with a built in SPA receiver that does up to 3S. I think the one from Beta FPV does 1 to 2S. This one will do 1 to 3S. And in fact, it's based off the same firmware target. It uses the Beta FPV F4, uh, the SX1280 uh, target. It's the same target that's on this one as well. And that's because of the um, built in Express LRS SPA receiver. So we got a uh, 16 volt, 220 microfarad capacitor already installed. And it's already soldered on. You got the uh, micro USB port here, you know, vertical on the bottom, pretty typical of a whoop style flight control board. And these are the, all the ESC FETs in the bottom. You see the voltage regulator there. Uh, that's a five volt, three amp, I believe. It might be a two amp, I'll, I'll put it up on the screen here. I don't, I don't remember the, all the exact specs can see the little mounting holes for the plug if you want to use the plug so here are all the goodies that come in the bag uh, XT30 of course got your mounting screws your grommets your nuts and of course the motor plugs if you want to use this with uh, motors that motor plugs you can solder those on if you want I personally I'm not going to use those um, and for those of you that don't want to use the motor plugs the, the motor output uh, soldering uh, holes are right here for that. They're also pretty tiny. They're not as tiny as the actual motor plug soldering points, but if you want to solder up the wires directly, they're right on the corners like that and they're labeled. So um, you know, that's what I'm going to be doing. I'm not going to be using the plugs. So on the other side here, we've got a bunch of pads. Mm, some of them have labels, some of them don't. And there is a nice diagram. I'll stick it up on here. In the video so you can um, see how to wire this up and um, it's on the main uh, product page as well but you probably will want to go there and download that and save it somewhere because it's not included in the documentation that is in the box and if you want to know what all the pads are and everything uh, I would consult that documentation and that will explain all the wiring. The, the pads are fairly big for a board this size and you should be able to solder on here if you have a reasonable amount of soldering experience. What's interesting is on over here, and very hard to see, these extra four pads right there are actually broken out for the USB port. So if you put this into a build where you don't have easy access to the micro USB port, you can solder on a USB port extension here and put that somewhere else on your quad if you want to be able to plug in your USB. And also it's good if you if you rip off the USB on this side over here for a from crash or whatever, then you can always access the uh, solder on a, an external USB port here on those four pads and um, I'll be able to configure the board that way. You can see here that the board is like a two layer board. So like the bottom uh, layer is where all the EC stuff is. And then the top layer is where all the flex control stuff is. And obviously you have a micro FL connector there for your uh, receiver antenna. This is the receiver antenna that is included. It, it's kind of funny that they put, they, such, they put such a huge and heavy antenna in here. Obviously wherever you put this, this is going to be very solidly protected. But I think it's overkill for, I think for most uh, things that you're going to use something like this for. This antenna is way overkill in terms of protection, but yeah, it's a good antenna. I'm actually going to probably use this in something else and use a different, like a happy model antenna on this one for the receiver tags. You don't really need something that big for 
the kinds of things you're going to probably put something like this in that's only 1 to 3s so and going to be pretty light. All right, so this is how much the, uh, the board weighs with the um, capacitor already soldered on. So it's about 5.6 grams. Pretty good weight for uh, the size. And uh, the one last thing I do want to touch upon on uh, the ESCs is they've already pre-flashed uh, BlueJ firmware onto these ESCs. So if you're looking to do RPM filter, 48 kilohertz, all that, um, it's already pre-flashed on here. So if you're a big fan of uh, BlueJ uh, ESC firmware, um, it's already on there and ready to go. Now in regards to the uh, version of Express LRS that's on here, that's built into the uh, flight controller, I'm told it's V2 firmware. I'm not 100% sure which build it is. I, I'm thinking it's the RC1 or RC2 build, but it's not 100% clear to me. However, you, know, you can always flash this to RC2, which is the latest that um, as, of, as of the time of this video. And uh, if you check out the link um, from my video like a couple weeks ago, they'll explain how to flash and update these boards to the latest code. Um, which will have the latest Express LRS code in it as well, because the code for Express LRS for the receiver is built into the Betaflight code. And as of the time of this video, it's uh, Betaflight 4.3 RC2, and that'll have the latest um, updates and bug fixes for Express LRS uh, version 2 in it. So you probably want to do the um, flashing of the update on this board at some point to bring it up to date. Anyway, in terms of the pricing of this board, it's uh, coming, I think, around 50 55 or $60. Not too bad. It's obviously a little bit more than the Beta FPV. I think that is one to 2S and it's coming around $45 or $50. Uh, but this one will go up to 3S. And the uh, ESCs are 15 amps versus 12 amps. So the capabilities are a little bit better. Now, in terms of the you know, overall quality, it's going to be hard to say until they actually fly it. But I've flown the. Um, uh, the one that did not, the, the previous one that didn't have the built-in receiver, and that's been holding up for me pretty well. And I have, and I have actually a, two or three of them, and all the builds that I have are still working. No, no burnt ECs yet, and no dead flight controllers yet. So, uh, although the quality in terms of the construction doesn't look like amazing or anything like that, I do like the fact that it's fairly decent solder pads. And as long as you're not doing anything super crazy, you know, they are again 15 amp ESCs. If you're not flying this on a five inch with 23 or six motors, you're probably gonna be okay with this board. Anyway, I think that's gonna cover for this video. Uh, let me know what you guys wanna see this in. Any suggestions? Let me know down in the comments below. Talk to you guys in the next one.